And so in this classic example from Dan DiCarlo in uh, Betty and Veronica, um, you see this woman in the foreground, um, but she's not really one woman. In fact, it's two, and she's just kind of there to sort of guide your eye through the page. The real focus is Veronica here, and then Archie and Veronica here. And actually, because this is two different people, they're just lined up to be kind of one person. It's something, again, you can't do it in a movie. You can't do it in a book. Um, just to help you get it placed, if you look, Veronica's looking this way, so that's way over here on the bottom panel, and that's her head here, so she, she would be over there, but this is her body there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what it really does is it helps you see that sort of double take that Archie's doing and that Veronica has to do as a result, and so it really just adds to the, the um, weird synesthesia or, or, um, or sort of body level experience you have with this comic as you twitch your own head um, to try and figure out what's going on. And here's just a crazy example that um, somebody sent me of a, one of their um, son or daughter's drawings. And I just love that I noticed so many tangents here between these things that are clearly panels. And I just think maybe there's something uh, innate about the way we want to design pages so things click together. Um, meta panels or inset panels. These are panels that are inside other panels. And there's some great examples here. This um, this is a three-panel comic from Will Eisner. These kids are, it's hot, they want to go out and play. And in this inset panel here, they're waiting for the guy to turn on the fire hydrant. And then he turns it on and everybody goes out and plays. So that inset panel is a box, it's a moment in time that is just lasting forever. Everything else is really celebratory. This is not celebratory. This is, um, everybody's just waiting. This is kind of filling them with anxiety, probably. Um, classic Calvin and Hobbes. He's got giant panels, three panels. Excuse me. Of <coughs> excuse me. So so sorry. Of um, a pterodactyl and this other dinosaur and this third dinosaur. And inside of the second one, you get this double bordered panel. Calvin, we're studying geography. What state do you live in? Um, and then he goes on to say, oh, denial. Uh, I suppose I can't argue with that. But it's this sort of double bordered, f you know, um, it's almost like capturing that moment or, or, or um, arguing against that moment, sort of taking all that ex exuberant energy and capturing it and sort of pinning it into that panel. It's really, really great. And here's another moment or another um, Calvin and Hobbes where all these inset panels are sounds. Um, of <laughs> sounds um, as uh, Hobbes isn't looking. So you're just getting lettering. You're seeing Calvin open his eyes, close his eyes, open his eyes, close his eyes. That's what Hobbes is doing. Um, and so that's just a great use of that as well. There's a um, inset panel too. Um, he, these are just beautiful. Again, from Craig Thompson, he's picking his own eyelash. He's sort of placing it. Um, or she's pick, picking one of hers, and they're sort of um, trading it, and it's just um, this really beautiful series of moments. One, two, three, you can read it that way, and then one, two, three, or you could read it one, two, one, 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 one. So this like slight complexity, this like weaving together of moments is a really beautiful thing you can do with that, that type of panel. And Craig Thompson, again, this is probably six, seven years earlier. It's just the turtle and the mouse. The mouse is... Um, body surfing, but it's, um, uh, and the turtle is just sitting there in love. And it's, it's this moment of sort of like we seeing, um, we seeing the turtle, his little heart above him, but we also see what this, the turtle is seeing. And so we can see both at the same time and see the turtle. Um, and we can sort of experience that love kind of in the same way we do, um, or in the same way he does, or she, I can't remember what the genders of these characters were. Last thing I'll show you is um, some diagrams. Um, they can get really complicated. Um, sometimes it's playful. Um, in The Goddess of War, something I showed you before by Lauren Weinstein, um, she uh, has a diagram of the goddess's house and some sort of uh, things that are inside the house. So it's a playful way to break up the story again and give you some character information um, by showing you around um, the house. There's a very famous example, which I won't show in great detail, but I do in the final course, and that's um, 
this woman's backstory here is told through all of these diagrams about um, her adoption, her parents, her, uh, the birth, the situation of her, of her, um, her real parents in high school. It's all told in this diagram. There's no words, and the story becomes kind of more sad and more poignant because you have to piece it together, um, and you're not given it all straightforwardly. You sort of come to learn it, like you might come to know a friend um, piece by piece. Chris Ware does things like this all the time. He gets very, very complicated in some of his designs and diagrams, but, but the previous one was a more basic one. Here's a simple one, which is hard to describe. Is it a, is it a diagram? I don't know. Again, it's Craig Thompson. He's full of great tricks like this. But the two brothers who have to sleep in the same bed, they're always tormenting each other with like boogers and pee and things like that. And so there's this arrow. He licks his finger. He, the arrow follows. You follow the poke. You get this other arrow. Hey, what's that? And it's almost like keeps going, but the arrows help make it a diagram. And, um, and uh, it's just a wonderful, weird little circular playful um, time that that he creates for you that he lets you experience so those are some things you can't do in movies and in prose comics is a really wonderful medium I hope you'll join me um, in comics for writers it's the course that I uh, teach it's an online course for people like you who know how to write maybe they know maybe they write prose, maybe they write short stories, maybe they write journalism, maybe they write nonfiction. I've had historians take this with great success, and journalists, um, but also short story writers. And um, sometimes people will come to them and say, you know, this would make a great graphic novel, so what do you do next? Um, it's not just caption picture, caption picture, caption picture, where the pictures are repeating the captions. That can be really, really dull comics, and it'll frustrate you as a writer. It'll turn you it'll turn you unhappy <laughs> because um, it doesn't feel as vibrant as it did when you were writing it. It just feels like you're bowing into some market idea about how to move it, how to sell more copies, how to sell some copies. Um, but if you learn the medium a little bit, and that's, that's what this course is for, um, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic, and you'll really love it. So click the link and um, some bonuses are there for you and they're expiring super soon so click that link and uh, I hope to see you in there. Bye bye.